Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the elements of design point, line, and shape, and how they affect our artworks. Let's get started. Point, line, and shape are part of the elements of design, which are the things artists design with, and we will discuss how the viewers will respond to different aspects of these elements. These responses are generally true in that most people will have similar feelings when confronted with these ideas. But keep in mind these are not absolutes, and you can alter and subvert these ideas with how you compose your whole image. A point is a dot. As a design element, a point will draw the eye to it like a target. We can also think in terms of it as a point in space, relating to our sense of spatial awareness. A point is the most basic mark we can make and it is one of the earliest design motifs human use and is found in cultures all across the globe. The artist Kandinsky wrote that a point is the proto-element in art and the most concise form. He said it is ideally a small circle, but could in fact be any geometric shape. He conceptualized the point as an element that was not in motion, but drew the eye with intensity. He often used points in his work to emphasize different areas of space in his designs. This painting of Moonlight in Holland shows how the point of the moon dominates your attention, bringing your eye to it despite the size and complexity of the boat. Points are a great design tool to create an area that has interest or intensity. Lines are an actual or implied one-dimensional mark connecting two points. Lines can be an actual linear mark, or implied lines by a sequence of marks the eye connects together. We will also read the edge of a shape as a line. We can see all of these lines here in this photograph by Max Dupin. We have the actual lines of the tree branches, the implied lines connecting the cars, the lines from the edges of the shadow shapes, and more. All of the lines in the design act as the underlying structure of the artwork, and they will become the pathways for the viewer's eyes to move around the piece. The lines we choose to build our image from, whether actual or implied, will communicate emotion. Sharp jagged lines can feel dangerous or aggressive, and create quick erratic movements in the eye. Straight lines feel hard, mechanical, and create a fast, direct movement in the viewer's eye. Curved lines can feel safe or welcoming and create a fluid movement in the viewer's eye. This Japanese print of an actor in a violent dance conveys this violent action by using sharp lines that change direction. Sharp lines are often associated with the masculine as well. Curved lines are associated with the feminine and often feel more related to nature. This female dancer with her soft curving lines feels graceful and gives a sense of gentle fluid movement that contrasts the male dancer's violent action. In both cases, the lines communicate the emotion of the dance. This moody photograph by Lizitsky capitalizes on the strong straight lines of the docks, which emphasizes the mechanical, rigid nature of the structure. It also creates direct movement throughout the image. This sensation is heightened by the contrast of the soft, organic, curvilinear clouds. Horizontal and vertical lines also feel stable, calm, or motionless. Piet Mondrian uses strong horizontal and vertical lines to create balanced and calm images. The Triumph of Titus uses actual horizontal lines from the stairs, but also creates implied vertical lines from the upright posture of the figures. This, combined with the staffs and pillars, creates a very stable composition. Diagonal lines feel dynamic, create excitement and action. Yoshiku created diagonal lines with the sword and scabbard, and crossed those with diagonals going in an opposite direction with the samurai's bodies and the blue slashes of implied wind. These contrasting angles give a sense of action in the battle, and creates an exciting image. Baccioni made work in the Futurist movement that focused on the speed and technology of the early 20th century. He wanted to capture the dynamism of a cyclist in this work. He captures this action by building the figure out of a flurry of angled lines. This gives the abstracted cyclist the dynamic forward movement. He combined the diagonals with short angled curves to create a sense of wind and add to the movement. 
Designers will construct their images from actual and implied lines, choosing the type of line that evokes the emotion they want to convey. When a line connects to itself, it creates a shape. Shapes are an actual or implied two-dimensional area. We can have actual shapes, which we can also refer to as positive shapes. This is a parallel idea to positive space, but positive shape refers to the specific shape of the positive space. And if we can have a positive shape, we can also have a negative shape, which are the shapes around the positive shapes. Implied shapes are made up of elements in the design that don't technically connect to create a shape, but your eye fills in the missing portions to create a completed shape. In Jerome's Duel After the Masquerade, the figures on the left are part of the positive space, but Jerome intentionally designed the group to create a large triangle and this would be considered a positive shape. Here in this image of St. Sebastian by Corot, the trees in the background part from each other, leaving a gap of negative space. But this negative space creates a strong triangular negative shape floating above the figures, acting like an exclamation of the scene. In this work by Dujin, the long curving line of the tree and its drooping branches connects to the two wives below which is then picked up by the curve of the rocks leading back to the tree. This creates a very clear and implied oval shape that contains the figures and groups them together. It doesn't matter if it's a positive shape, negative shape, or implied shape. They are all equally important to our design. Think of them all like a series of puzzle pieces, and we must be conscious of their specific shape and how they relate to each other. If you ignore this, you are missing out on a key part of your design. When we design our shapes, we must also consider how easily they will be perceived by the viewer. This is especially true in animation or cartooning, because by its nature, a cartoon is an abstraction of life. This means it must be very clearly designed to communicate the idea it's trying to convey. To make sure their designs read clearly, artists will pay special attention to the silhouette of the shapes in the work. A silhouette removes all the detail inside of the shape by blacking it out. A well-designed silhouette should still be clearly readable and not create confusion. These two characters by T.S. Sullivan still read clearly in silhouette. Their poses are turned in a way that the body forms still make sense. One character is designed with a tall square hat and the other with a short round hat. This makes each character read instantly without confusion. But this also applies to all design, not just cartoons. This painting of two men contemplating the moon creates a design of very strong silhouettes of the figures and the trees, which makes the image clear and captivating. Hiroshige creates strong silhouettes for the trees and figures. He layers his composition with large silhouette shapes, like the distant hill with a tree and a walking figure. He paid careful attention to the design and balance of his shapes to make the image clear and the design easy to read. Shapes can also be broken down into categories of geometric and organic. Geometric shapes are mathematically repeatable, like a circle, triangle, square, or other similarly uniform shape. Geometric shapes tend to feel more man-made. This woodblock print of a Shinto temple emphasizes the strong geometric rectangular and triangular shapes by contrasting it with the natural elements of the surrounding forest. Organic shapes are those shapes that are irregular and not mathematically repeatable in their design. Organic shapes relate more to nature. Ogata Gekko's print shows the female spirit of a cherry tree emerging to stop a man who desires to cut it down. Gekko describes the tree with beautiful organic forms. He links the spirit figure to the tree by having her robes undulate in a way that mimics the organic qualities of the tree. This gives a visual clue to her relationship to the tree and hints at her otherworldly origins. Shapes can communicate emotional information like lines. Shapes that are pointy can feel active, in motion, or threatening like fire or sharp teeth. Squares, rectangles, or triangles sitting on their bases can feel stable, like buildings or pillars. Round shapes can feel comfortable and safe, like balloons or pillows. Regardless if it's a positive, negative, implied, geometric, or organic shape. 
Hokusai's famous wave off Kanagawa is designed with lots of sharp points tipping the waves, which feel like teeth or claws threatening to destroy the men on the boat. This makes nature a vicious monster who dwarfs the human figures and puts them at its mercy. But the whole composition is made up of triangles and pointed shapes, where the boats seem in eminent danger and shows the power of nature. Pieter de Hooch painted the interior of this Dutch house with a young couple in it, and his main design motif was squares and rectangles. Most are seen in a flat position to the viewer, which makes them feel stable. The only real diagonals come from other squares or rectangles in perspective. The use of all of these squares and rectangles makes the design feel incredibly stable and static. While de Hooch's rectangular room is very stable, nothing can beat a triangle sitting on its base. While a triangle tipped in space can feel active or unstable, a triangle sitting on its base is the most stable and immovable form because it doesn't feel like it can tip over. And this is a huge clue to how we perceive design. Even though 2D images are abstractions of the real world, we apply the physics of our world unconsciously to them. And this is one reason we can make claims like triangles sitting on their base will feel stable to the viewer. Charles Camino designed his Arab mendicant in meditation as a triangle sitting on a flat surface low in the picture plane. The fact that the triangle is sitting on its base and is low in the picture plane adds to its stability, making it feel grounded, like gravity has already pushed it to the bottom. This makes the figure seem calm, balanced, and very stable. Jerome's painting of the philosopher Diogenes shows him comfortably sitting in his home, a large clay pot. He is surrounded by dogs, which were symbols for his philosophy of cynicism. The large circle of the pot dominates the design and contains Diogenes. This makes him feel safe and protected in his humble abode. But a design is rarely one thing, and it is the way we combine these elements together that create the complexity of our content or message. If we look at the underlying structure of Jerome's painting, we see the large circle, but also a system of horizontal and vertical lines made of rectangles and triangles. Diogenes is a stable triangle sitting protected in the circular pot. The dogs representing his cynical philosophy form more stable triangles that border him, separating him from the society we see behind. And this is what Diogenes did in his life. He criticized society and intentionally created conflicts that ostracized him, Jerome uses the elements of design to tell Diogenes' story without words, and make you feel the isolation of the man. When you design, think about what you want the viewer to feel, and which kinds of lines or shapes will evoke that emotion, and how and where you can draw the viewer with points. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.